Hey everybody, Antonio here. As promised, I've watched Forma, which was directed by Ayumi Sakamoto, which was shown at the movie house Cubics, which was at Rathausstrasse Alexanderplatz. And all I have to say is this film was quite interesting, mostly because it was very minimalist in its style, and everything about it just seemed quite natural. I mean, it's not just a movie that I ended up watching, but it really shows、um, the everyday lives of people. The everyday lives of you know, people in modern times and how we live, how we act towards each other, and basically normal situations like this. And even at times the most scandalous, like. Murder and rumor spreading and different types of scandal. And this pretty much opened my mind because, as a film fan, I'm quite used to the more、um, uh, nicely edited and more linear story、um, films that I've watched in the past. But this one is. Quite different. The story isn't really that linear. It's almost non linear. There are some events that are not really related to each other. There are some that end up being repeated. And there are some that, well, almost come out of left field. And on the technical side, how it's shot, most of it are either establishing shots or. Um, like um, wide shots, yes. Most of them are either establishing shots or wide shots. And sure, there may not be a lot of edits or cuts here and there, but I think this really keeps the tone of how、um, society is. And, well, not just really society, but how. Human beings are how they walk, how they talk, how we are, how we interact with each other. It just basically shows, well, how human beings are as people. And also, in the acting side, I could really hear that a lot of the lines are either improvised or almost ad libbed. As of though that sometimes the script basically felt non existent, but it really adds a certain layer of、um, naturalism to the movie. As of though that I wasn't just watching a movie, but I felt like I was really watching real life unfold before my very eyes. And that's pretty much how the story is. It may be non linear, it may be. Quite confusing at first, and at times the pace may be slow in the first few moments. But if you really stick along and if you really keep an open mind, it'll get more interesting later on. And as I said in my earlier video, I won't really spoil anything, especially the ending. But for those of you who haven't really seen this movie, I suggest you go check it out because. Frankly, this will really open your mind, especially when it comes to the non linear style of storytelling, and especially in terms of seeing how Japan is as a country as opposed to like the quote unquote、uh, colorful, romanticized land that we usually think of when reading, anime, when reading manga or even when watching anime. It's quite a real、um, city. It's not all that glamorous. It does have areas where、um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of traffic and there's a lot of like、um, buildings that may not look that nice. But still, it really adds a sense of realism to what the movie is talking about. It basically talks about. You know how humans are, how, how humans are to each other and how they act, and especially with the scandalous moments. And sure, 
The characters are definitely interesting as well. Ayako, who was played by, um, let me look who's the name of the actress who played Ayako. Nagisa Umeno. She's quite interesting because the thing about Ayako is that she starts the movie seemingly bored. I mean, she puts a paper bag on her head, or excuse me, a paper box on her head and just walks around with it. It just states that, you know, her life in the office is quite mundane. There's almost nobody around that she can talk to and nobody that she can relate to until she meets this one person by the name of Yukari, who is played by, yeah, I'm looking at IMDb right now, Emiko Matsuoka. And they automatically recognize each other from their childhood days. And they kind of bond with each other, even though at times Ayako tends to backbite um, Yukari in front of her father, and Yukari tends to backbite Ayako. I would have to say, yeah, Ayako, as a character, she can be bored with life. She has a lot of pain. She suffers a lot, especially since, you know, she only has her father, and her mother, well, is not even with them anymore. I won't really spoil anything, but yeah, that's what really happened. She's the only person in the house, and her father is the only person or family that she has. Yukari, well, we don't really know that much of her family, but it's safe to say that she and Ayako knew each other ever since they were high schoolers. And Yukari is somewhat the opposite of Ayako. Yukari is quite younger than her. And... Sure, there are times that she does have her bad side, um, but I won't really reveal it. But she's quite sympathetic as well as a person. I mean, she's definitely the type of person who goes through a lot of pain in her life. In fact, a lot of the characters in this movie go through some sort of pain, whether it's in terms of the family, in terms of each other, and that's just it. I feel like the characters basically go through something that we as humans can relate to and we try to sympathize with them. But I think for me, the most, sympath the most sympathetic character in the movie has to be the father because, um, who is played by IS, Ken Mitsuishi, because, well... Sure, he does laze around the house after work, but I think he's definitely the type of person who does see what has happened in terms of that videotape. I'm not really going to spoil, but yeah, he is definitely the type of person who sees what has happened, and he hasn't really been too involved with his daughter's life. So he can be a bit deadbeat sometimes. I think another sympathetic character has to be Nagata, who is played by Seiji Nozoe. Yeah, definitely sympathetic as well. I mean, when he sees Yukari all alone, he definitely tries to sympathize with her. He feels sorry for her. But when Ayako is telling a lot of these horrible stories, well, he doesn't know what to do. I mean, he's just kind of in the middle of it. So yeah, that's it for characters. I think for me, the only characters that I really like in the movie are Yukari, Mr. Tamura, and of course, Ayako's father. Ayako's okay, but at times she can be quite bitchy. And at times... She can be quite cruel as a person, and she's not really the type of person I really want to meet every day. So yeah, 
the music, well, there's not that much music in there, only except only in the store scenes, but other than that, there's almost no music to speak of. I think it's just because, let's face it, this is just to keep the naturalism and the minimalism of this movie. So overall, this movie, for me, was quite interesting. I think newcomers to film or anybody who's not really that used to minimalism or those who want a faster pace in terms of movies and whatever form of entertainment will be kind of turned off by this. But I think those who have the patience and the time can definitely invest themselves in this movie. And if I were to give a score to this movie, I would probably give it a 3.5 out of 5 because sure, some of the mo some of the movie's moments uh, ran quite slow, especially in the beginning, and that at times can be quite tiring. But it's definitely some of the middle and final acts that definitely make up for it. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in to my next review, which is going to be tomorrow. I will be reviewing um, Musica Eterna, which is going to be shown at the Berliner Philharmonica, starring one of my favorite sopranos, Anna Prohaska, singing the role of Dido from Dido and Aeneas. That for me will be quite exciting, even though a part of me will be quite skeptical. Well, you'll see why in the review. Until then, this is Antoni signing off and wishing you all a good night.